Hi everybody, welcome to the latest episode of From the Rock the Cloud with me, your host, Tom Hall. Um, as you know, I'm not an expert on anything, um, but we try to get experts here to talk about all things cloud, server, on-prem, Azure, all of that goodness related. And um, boy, have we got a special guest for you today. So we will get to him in a second. Um, but today is, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things happening in the world. And Azure Stack HCI, it, like, it's, it's a big topic, so we need a big personality to talk about. So uh, we've managed to get hold of a guest. Like I said, I mentioned him. He's a pretty special guy. Uh, we've got uh, my friend Sven all the way from, uh, from Germany, uh, from the DAC region here at Microsoft. So Sven, uh, if you could just introduce yourself to our lovely audience, uh, maybe tell us who you are, what you do, and a little bit about yourself, um, and then maybe we can get stuck into today's topic. Yes, of course. So hello, everyone. My name is Sven um, from Germany. I am working for Microsoft for around about 10 years. And um, for the whole 10 years, I'm focused on Windows Server. And um, yeah, now we have Azure Stack HCI. And it's wonderful that I could be in the role of an Azure Stack HCI um, expert for the DAC regions of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. So it's my job to bring together all the relevant stakeholders um, from the OEM to the distributor, to the reseller, and uh, from Microsoft um, all up. So it's a very wonderful job. It's a very wonderful pr um, uh, product. And it's wonderful to be in that show today. Brilliant. And um, Sven, before we just get into the topic at hand, now I know uh, because I work with you, so I know uh, that you also run the the, the DAC uh, Server Club. Now, if I'm right in thinking, how many members have you got in the in the German ser Server Partner Club? It's not so easy to say because we don't have a official registration page, but um, okay. we have between eight or ten thousand IT experts following us. Uh, via LinkedIn, via YouTube, where we are offering our um, readiness content. And um, prior to COVID-19, we had a lot of live events all across Germany. And for example, we launched Windows Server 2019 uh, three years ago, and we had around about 250 people in one cinema um, over six, seven locations all across Germany. One, um, yeah. Um, reaching them to do readiness was a really, really great uh, opportunity to get in contact with partners. And now, um, due to COVID-19, it's only an um, online session and you can watch it on uh, YouTube. Yeah. But it's a, a lot of people following us because they need to understand the technique behind yeah. the product. So it's one thing to understand how to sell it. But there's another thing to deploy it and to manage it. And that's where we are focusing on. Brilliant. You're kind of like the Beyonce of server. Like you've got the biggest following in the server industry. And you're also launching OSs in cinemas. So it's like launching new Star Wars movies. Um, you know, I remember like a few years ago when server was kind of like a real niche thing. Now it's, it's just gone crazy. Everybody's loving it. So Sven, look, thank you for being with us today. Uh, I'm sure the audience are going to love what we're going to talk about today. Um, and well, what are we going to talk about today? We're talking about Azure Stack HCI. So we want to talk about what Azure Stack HCI is and why it is more than only an operating system. Okay. So Azure Stack HCI, it's a real buzzword. Uh, I think we've even created an acronym for it, which is ASHCI. So that's our own Azure Stack HCI. Like we've acronymed an acronym, double acronym. Um, but what do, what is Azure Stack HCI, Sven? If you could, in a nutshell, explain that to people, what, what, would, what would you say that is for the audience? Yeah, I, I think it makes sense to start with the question, what is HCI? So HCI is a hyper-converged infrastructure. This is nothing um, completely new. It's only a new technology to provide a classical three-tier cluster. So in the past, we had three tiers like storage, network, and compute. And HCI brings together all those three components. And the network and the storage part will be replaced with um, software um, 
related things like um, 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 network and um, yeah and um, sorry network and um, storage um, are managed by the software and not by the hardware and this is the magic of um, HCI and Azure Stack HCI is the operating system running um, these hyper-converged infrastructures. So it's a completely new um, operating system like Windows Server is. And um, Azure Stack HCI is the operating system for the host, so for the hardware to enable HCI. And then we have the guest operating systems and those guest operating systems, you can uh, run Linux or Windows Server, whatever you want to. So it's a completely new operating system. I, I, I think that's good for people to, to hear that because, again, there's probably a bit of confusion out there with some people that, you know, and, we, and we've had some, some, I wouldn't say false storms, but we've had different iterations of Windows Server doing certain different things. It's nice to understand that Azure Stack HCI is a completely new OS. Now, as Azure Stack does not include Windows Server VM rights, okay, um, do, you know, do you need to go and get in addition to that, uh, you know, Windows Server data center, you know, what, what, why would a customer invest in Azure Stack instead of using, say, S2D uh, with a data center license, you know, in that scenario, what's the difference? Yeah, so Azure Stack HCI is based on the technology Storage Spaces Direct. And Storage Spaces Direct is included in Windows Server data center. Um, it, it's not brand new. We had it um, in Windows Server 2019, for example, but um, in Azure Stack HCI, we have additional features. And um, in Windows Server Data Center, the good thing is that Storage Spaces Direct is included. It's for free without any additional cost. But Microsoft is not investing a lot in the S2D part in Windows Server Data Center all the new features um, coming to HCI is limited for Azure Stack HCI. So for customers with limited um, needs for an HCI environment, Windows Server Data Center with Storage Spaces Direct might be good enough. And the good news is it's not end of support. So we will have it in Windows Server 2022. We will have it in Windows Server 2025, for example. So we are supporting this, but on the other side, Azure Stack HCI is an absolute focus product of Microsoft. So you can see we had Ignite two or three um, weeks ago, and we announced all the new features in Azure Stack HCI, and there are a lot of them, and they are only available in Azure Stack HCI, not in Storage Spaces Direct. And this makes um, Azure Stack HCI um, special. Another thing, and that's why I said at the beginning that Azure Stack HCI is more than an operating system, because the difference between Storage Spaces Direct and Azure Stack HCI is the workload running on Azure Stack HCI. So at Ignite, we announced, for example, that Azure Virtual Desktop is coming on premises, so into your um, data center, but only if you're running Azure Stack HCI. If you're running Windows Server cluster with data center, storage spaces direct, Azure Virtual Desktop is not available. If you're running any competitive solution, it's not available. So Azure Virtual Desktop is only available in Azure and Azure Stack HCI. And another one is um, Windows Server Azure Edition, for example. That's an uh, addition with additional features that are not included in the origin Windows Server but it's included in the Azure version of Windows Server. And all those new features are coming to Azure Stack HCI also, and this makes Azure Stack HCI so powerful. Okay, so it, it, it's, 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 I suppose, a, the, a modern solution for that hybrid infrastructure. So yeah. Sven, you know, what, are we, what are we talking about? You know, what else should we have in mind to understand with these benefits? What, what other benefits are there of Azure Stack that you know, really make it different? Yeah, for, for example, stretch cluster is a feature that's available in Azure Stack HCI, but not in S2D. And um, I am in contact with a lot of system integrators all across Germany these days. And they tell me that the stretch cluster feature 
is one of the features the people love most. And this is the reason why they are going with Azure Stack HCI, because we have a lot of customers outside with a lot of uh, branch offices and they want to split their cluster all, um, across all those offices. And only Azure Stack HCI is able to do that. And um, there are a lot of Azure related workloads like Azure Kubernetes services to manage and to deploy containers. And um, if you want to do this, you can do this on premises with Windows Server 2022, for example, you can do this in Azure and you can do this in Azure Stack HCI. But the benefit in doing this with Azure Stack HCI is that Azure Stack HCI OS is very similar to what we have in Azure. If you're running Windows Server on-premises and you're using Azure in the cloud, it's all Microsoft, but the OSs are very different. So it's not um, so easy to, to migrate solution or to combine it. It's possible, but it's not so easy. If you're using Azure Stack HCI, it feels like your on-premises infrastructure is part of Azure especially if you're using Azure Arc, for example. So Azure Arc is a very new solution. You can, um, in, um, you can uh, put Azure Arc on your on-premises Windows Server um, OSs, no matter if they are running on Hyper-V or VMware, maybe they are in the multi-cloud. And Azure Arc brings all those Windows servers together and you have one um, single glass of pane to, um, to manage and view all your Windows servers. And um, so Azure Stack HCI and Windows, uh, uh, sorry, Azure Stack HCI and Azure are becoming more or less one big solution. And this is um, okay. one of the benefits of Azure Stack HCI compared to competitive solutions. So, so it's, it's actually more complicated because you can do more with it, but it's simpler because it's all in one place. So, uh, yeah, we, we, and, and also we, we, we're getting people out of that server room and they can now work from a nice desk uh, in a nice place and they can actually manage that all in the cloud, which is, which is really cool. Now, um, when I think about competitive HCI solutions, I'm, you know, I see a lot with say like one of my partners I talked to about Nutanix, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or vSAN or, or these other types of, uh, uh, you know, HCI solutions that are out there in the market. What What is really the benefit of the Microsoft Azure Stack solution versus say Nutanix, you know, say vSAN? What, what, what would you say that, you know, the, the killer differences are? I think the benefit is the strategy um, of Azure Stack HCI. So if you look at all the competitive solutions at the moment, um, Nutanix and VMware with vSAN absolutely have the majority of uh, share worldwide. So Azure Stack HCI is, is, is very new and um, you might think, okay, I go with all those other, other solutions because um, yeah, there are a lot of partners who are um, uh, familiar with the, uh, with the solution and they are able to deploy, they have a lot of experience. But if you invest into an Azure Stack HCI solution th these days, it makes sense to look into the future, where all those solutions are going to and where your infrastructure is going to. So if you only want to run an on-premises infrastructure and cloud is nothing you have in mind for the next couple of years, then um, maybe S2D in Windows Server is good enough for you, or maybe you go with an alternative solution because of cost or whatever. But if you really want to go hybrid, then you should de decide what um, cloud solution is the one you prefer. And if it's Azure, then of course, Azure Stack HCI is closest to um, Azure. And um, it makes sense to use the on-premises OS um, that is um, linked to the uh, public cloud. But um, another point is that Microsoft is investing a lot in cloud solutions. So um, cloud first is something Satya Nadella said in, I think it was 2014. And this is what we live at Microsoft. So every investment is going into cloud solutions. But Azure Stack HCI, even if it is an on-premise solution, is part of our cloud strategy. 
So we have hundreds and thousands of engineers and people working on Azure Stack HCI because we think this is something that's supporting our cloud strategy. So you will see yeah. a lot of improvements in Azure Stack HCI, new features and so on over the next couple of years. And Windows Server has a refresh cycle of three years. For um, Azure Stack HCI, we will have a, a lot of new features, minimum every year. And yeah. um, so it's not only about looking at the solution today, it's looking about where is the solution going to. And if you trust on Microsoft and trust on the engineers of Microsoft and look what Azure is, um, um, is going to. So if you look at the development of Azure over the last uh, couple of years, so when we started our um, public cloud, we were the small one around all our competitors. And look at Microsoft now, we are leading in so many ways. Um, and um, Azure is one of the yeah, broadest and most performant um, solutions we have. And the same will happen with Azure Stack HCI. So, 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 so I guess it's, it's, it's one eye on the future. It's about longevity. And also, I suppose it's scale, because when you look at the investments that Microsoft put into that space, yeah. you know, we, we, we're able to develop so much faster. So it's that eye on the future. So, you know, you know, maybe you're thinking short term, save some money. I'll get the Nutanix solution right now. But, you know, that might not work for you in five years time. So actually, you need to make sure that you're, you know, investing with an eye on the future so that your infrastructure and, and scalability and all of that kind of stuff is actually in the right place to take your business forward. So, yeah, OK, that that makes sense to me. So who is the target group? Like who, who you know, who who's who's going to be like today take advantage of Azure Stack HCI and, you know, what are the use cases for, you know, for, for people out there? Yeah, the target group is every customer who's running a traditional three-tier cluster. I read a study, it's around about three years ago, and um, that study, it was from VMware, I guess, says that 80% of existing clusters will be refreshed by an HCI cluster over the next uh, couple of years. So following the study, I can say that um, a customer with a cluster is a potential for HCI. And uh, right. potential for HCI is a potential for Azure Stack HCI. And um, there are some workloads that are very relevant. So for example, in Windows Server 2019, Microsoft announced that um, Office or Microsoft 365 apps are not supported any longer on Windows Server. One year after the launch, we had a solution that fixed the problem and now we were able to do that. With Windows Server 2022, we said there's no way to support Office 365 apps on Windows Server any longer. The reason for that is that Office 365 is a product um, that gets a lot of um, new features and updates um, every, um, every month, every quarter and so on. So it's an as a service product. But Windows mm -hmm. Server is something you buy and um, there are no changes in the product. And it's very difficult to bring those two um, product types together. So as a service and a perpetual license. And that's why um, so many customers today are thinking about what should I do with my um, RDS environment, so my remote desktop yeah. services environment in the future. So in the past, I had Office um, on uh, my Windows server. Now it's not any longer supported. And Azure Virtual Desktop, including the Office um, solutions, is something that's um, possible on Azure Stack HCI, so it's possible in your on-premises. And talking to partners and customers, I learned that from the announcement three year, uh, weeks ago at Ignite to, um, until today, this is one of the most relevant um, topics our partners and customers are talking about, um, that Azure yeah. Stack HCI is supporting Azure Virtual Desktop. And this is only one of the solutions we usually have exclusive in Azure 
coming to Azure Stack HCI, coming to your on-premises. So I can't say a specific size of a customer or a specific vertical is um, mm. our target group. What I can say is say is um, that um, a customer who needs an HCI environment because they want to refresh their um, traditional three-tier cluster and they are looking for features that are only available in Azure these days or in Windows Server Azure Edition is our target group. Okay, perfect. Okay, so from what I've just gathered from you, it makes sense for any and everybody who's thinking of, of investing in server infrastructure right now to be thinking about Azure Stack HCI. Do you see any particular maybe bottlenecks for people? Is there any, anything that's going to hold up that transition to, you know, an, the new world of, of Azure Stack for people? Yes, absolutely. So I, I talked to an um, MVP in uh, Microsoft, most valuable professional in Germany, and I asked him about um, his idea about Azure Stack HCI in the next calendar year. So how many um, customers do you have? How many solutions are you going to sell? And he said, it's very easy to sell this because uh, his traditional um, customers are coming to him and say, I'm very interested in Azure Stack HCI. So he said um, about 200 solutions he is able, only he is able to sell in the next calendar year. The issue I see is that we don't have enough people like him um, because he is able to deploy, to plan, to manage, um, Azure Stack HCI, but there are not, not a lot of people who are able to do that. And this is our uh, bottleneck. So from my gut feel, we have around about five to 10 people in whole Germany that are really able today to deploy and manage an Azure Stack HCI environment. And this is not enough. So what we are going to do is to find out who are the correct, uh, who are the most relevant partners with the most relevant customers. And then we try to find out who are the employees with the basic technical skills to be able to do Azure Stack HCI tomorrow. And then we are going to invest a lot in um, making those people ready. So everyone yeah. who has um, technical resources and is willing to invest in readiness for those uh, um, um, resources to be ready to um, deploy and manage um, Azure Stack HCI um, should should come to Microsoft and say, okay, we want to sell the solution. We are very interested in customers, <laughs> but we don't have the readiness. Yeah. 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 And also they could do the the new training modules that are coming next year. That would be a good start. Uh, what, what module? So we've got new training modules coming next year, haven't we? On um, like proper fundamentals yeah. on, on hybrid and Azure Stack. Yeah, so I have seen those um, two modules, but um, those modules are focusing on the um, Azure services part. So it's more about how to manage, how to use the Microsoft management tools. It's not about hardware. There's nothing about hardware, but this is very important because you have to replace your existing hardware with a new one. You have to replace your yeah. Windows Server environment with Azure Stack HCI. It, it, it's not very likely that we have customers um, building their Azure Stack HCI environment on a green field. Most of them have an existing infrastructure and you need yeah. a very deep knowledge about how to put the new Azure Stack HCI into the existing data center from the hardware and from the software and from the networking and storage perspective. So yeah. it's, it's a broad band of knowledge you need. And those um, new um, training courses are focusing on the, on the management of Azure Stack HCI, not really on the deployment, unfortunately. Okay. okay. Well, it's a starting point. Anyway, um, Absolutely. Maybe, we'll be, very maybe, uh, maybe we can ask then for a deployment module. I think that's probably 
that's that that's the takeaway that i'm going to take away from this yeah what we are so doing in germany for example we have uh, an um, mvp that is spending a lot of time in doing readiness for partners and he created a readiness pass for pre-sales for deployment for administrators so it's a two to five days course where you are um, having a theoretical and practical um, yeah, readiness um, to, to be able to do the things you have to do. And at the end, you will have an additional day um, for, for trying to find out if you're really ready. So you're doing a kind of um, test on an um, existing environment and um, you have to show that you have learned all the things you need and then you can get a kind of certificate it will not be a certificate uh, from microsoft because it's an individual trainer offering this um, but um, if anyone is interested in having this deep dive training and readiness um, the, the he is offering it in german and in english so um, you could contact uh, me or well, I, um, I, I'm interested. Like, and, um, if if my boss is listening, I'm you know as soon as we can get past COVID, uh, I'm more than happy to come to Germany for a three day uh, session. Uh, anyway, um, Sven, look, you can do it online. Fun. You can do it online. But <laughs> oh, no, no, you're no, no, well, no, I have to you're come welcome to Germany. In Germany. <laughs> no, 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 I have to come. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I have to. Come. It's not available online. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, my mistake. It's not available um, <laughs> online. Yeah. To me, online. <laughs> not, not for you. Yeah. Um, look, Sven, thank you very much. Um, I, I told the audience we were in for a treat. You know, you, like you, you really do know your stuff when it comes to Azure Stack. So, any questions for Sven? Anything that um, I've not asked him that you want to ask him? We will make sure that he gets those questions please send them in to me and the team and uh, yeah, we'd love to get those questions. Now, Sven, every single time we do an episode, um, we have this thing called the meme server meme review. The server yeah. meme review is basically silly memes uh, that are out there that um, I'm, I'm sure are hilarious and humorous. Generally speaking, I don't know what they mean. So I'm, I'm kind of getting there. I'm kind of getting there with them. Um, now, for the audience, if you have any memes that you want to send in, please do let me know what they are. Now, um, Sven, what we do is we show the memes. You probably will understand the meme, and I probably won't understand the meme. And then that's kind of the that's the beauty of the meme review. So, um, right. So let's <laughs> so let's see the first. Let's get a reaction to the first meme. I don't always crash, but when I do, you can be sure it's at two a.m. <laughs> Yeah, that's a wonderful one. But um, the, the good thing is, this is a very big data center, I guess. But the good thing is that um, in a modern data center like Azure, um, there um, is a lot of um, software defined. So you don't need human beings to keep this kind of data center up and running. Um, so no matter if it, there's an issue at 2 a.m. or at um, 2 p.m., um, the, the customer will get um, the, the performance they want to have, no matter if there's a problem in a specific uh, data center. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and absolutely. Usually it's, uh, it's 2 a.m. on Sunday or Saturday, yeah. Yeah, I often crash at 2 a.m. Uh, but nothing to do with the server. Uh, anyway, so that's just, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, right, so, uh, right, let's do meme number two. Uh, oh, test server uh, used uh, as an expensive space heater. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It, 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 it's true. I think, I, I think sometimes people do use servers as heaters. Yeah, we are laughing when we see this picture, but um, if I, I look into um, all, the, um, all the data we have at Microsoft about old infrastructure like unsupported OS, like Windows 7 or Windows XP or Windows Server 2008, I wonder why so many customers are still using this unsupported OS. And talking to the OEMs, we know that there's a lot of old hardware outside. And so it's, it's very funny to see this, but I think in 
a lot of small companies, this is um, reality these days. Yeah. yeah, and if they want to save money on heating, they can just use that. They can use that old server, and it heats up their office nice. So yeah. uh, you know, it's it, it's like lose win because yeah, I mean, your data is probably susceptible to being hacked, and uh, you know, if you've got customers, their customer data is probably going to get stolen. Fine, but you're warm, so that's okay. Um, so, but yeah, it's not it's not a good move. It's not a good move. Um, okay, so let, let's let's <laughs> let's summarize really quickly. Um, I think, you know, what you were saying was that, uh, you know, from a stretch clustering perspective, if that's what you want to go do and you want to basically, you know, optimize your, 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 your estate, uh, then Azure Stack is, is the thing for you. Um, it's incredibly new, but it's a new full flavored OS from Microsoft. It's not built on that old Windows Server tech. It's, it's an ever evolving, yearly updating, new, exciting OS, which is really going to basically modernize people's HCI um, and gives people the comfort that there's a one eye on the future with Microsoft putting all the engineering effort into this with the cloud, with Azure, and and, and that is essentially what Azure Stack is in a nutshell. Would you suggest that I've missed anything off on my explanations, Sven? No, that's perfect. <laughs> you know what? When Sven says it's perfect, then it is perfect. So look, everybody, massive round of applause for Sven. Thank you for coming. Um, thank you all for listening. If you want to know any more about server tech, about Azure Stack HCI, about, um, you know, a reseller option kits, because we still like it when you buy those, uh, anything you want to buy or, or anything you want to know about server, let me know on Rock to the Cloud, even if you've got silly memes, and we will try and get them onto the show. Um, thanks very much for today's episode, and we'll see you all soon. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.